some people filter with applications and some filter with marketing and gate points. Wizard Academy filters with marketing and gate points. So here's what I mean. You have a school, your Harvard, your, well, really anything. Um, that's a formal school, you accept applications and you take those applications, you look at it and you think, this is our people, these are not our people for whatever reasons. Um, Wizard Academy didn't do that. If you pay to attend a class, you can come. I don't care how you got here. I don't care how you heard about us. I don't care if you stumbled on the website through Google. If you've heard about us and you found the website and you paid, you belong. So how do we make sure, because this is a real problem, we have a room that fits 32 people in chairs, but realistically, the sweet spot is like 25 students. I find that anything over 30 and it feels like an event instead of a class and you don't really get to hang out with everybody. But in a room full of only 25 people, one person who's not the right person for this space, it can really ruin everything. <laughs> so uh, they can make it a struggle. They can uh, stop other people from learning. It, it's a pain in the ass. So when you don't take applications, how do you try to guarantee that everybody in the room belongs there? And the answer is, uh, we've got three things that we use to sort of do that. One, we, the name, Wizard Academy. If you're the kind of person who thought it was a good idea to go to a, ooh, to go to a place called Wizard Academy to learn about business, then hey, guess what? The odds increased that you might be our kind of crazy. <laughs> and if you thought it was cool to go to a random place called Whiskey Marketing School to become a whiskey sommelier, and you ended up in this tower, odds are you're probably already our kind of people, right? Now, second filter. We don't really do mass marketing, which is weird for a marketing school, but we don't. We, we grow from people um, talking about us because they love us and they want to send somebody, or you found the YouTube channel and you thought these guys seem like my kind of people, but that's another filter filter, right? When you go to a restaurant and you're like, oh, this is amazing. And then you think of who you should tell about it. You don't think of everybody. You think of the people who would love that kind of food in your life. When you come to Wizard Academy, have a great class. Uh, you don't think of everyone in your life needs to go to Wizard Academy because there's definitely people in your life you're thinking should probably not go here or wouldn't enjoy it. But there are some people that you're like, oh my gosh, this person would love this place. And that's who you tell, and that's how we grow. That's a filter for us because that means the odds that you're in the room sent by somebody who thought you would love it, odds that you're one of our people, they go up again. That's two filters, right? Now, the third one is we're really expensive. And we are not expensive in the world of masterminds or corporate marketing events. Uh, we're like a third to a fourth of the price of most of those things. But in the world of small business entrepreneurs and independent human beings trying to get educated and learn things, we're on the pricier side of things. And that is also another filter for us. Not because we only want rich people, because if you reach out to me, we almost always work on ways we can figure out how to get you here. But because when you're in the room and you've paid for it, and it's real, and it was hard, you take it seriously. And that's a whole other filter. Now, once you've made it through all the filters and you're here, what do we do? I'll tell you. But first, let's talk about I.W. Harper. I.W. Harper, is this sort of a nerdy one for me? Um, there's been a lot of people who've talked a lot about the great history of I.W. Harper. Go look up um, Chuck Cowdery. He wrote about them and the Bernheim brothers in both of his books and, or two of his, he's got multiple books, but two of his books, and people online have written about the history of the Bernheim brothers, but they date back to 1880, or 1878, 1879, they, um, it's Isaac and Bernard, Bernheim, how's that for names? Um, they started releasing I.W. Harper as a, they changed their last name because, and this happened a lot, like with, with Rosenstiel and Shinley, they became often different brand names and different things, um, but they, they were sort of merchant bourbon creators. They buy barrels and resell them, and they became famous for high-quality bourbon. Uh, they had this really successful company that grew all the way until they sort of sold it right before Prohibition. Not right before, but before Prohibition. And then leading into Prohibition, it sort of eked along 
And I'm saying this because you may have not heard of I.W. Harper, and there's a reason, even though it's a super historic Kentucky bourbon uh, story. So they sell it. They go through uh, making selling medicinal whiskey during Prohibition. And then they, they eventually sort of they sell again outside of Prohibition. They eventually get sold in the long run to, uh, well, Shinley takes them. And then Guinness buys them, which became United Distillers, which became Diageo. And not exactly in that order, but Diageo ended up owning I.W. Harper. And in the 80s, I don't know if you remember this, but in the 80s, there was a huge rush to budget bourbon. And all the big brands went straight for the cheapest stuff they could get to compete with vodka and tequila, mostly vodka, except for a few brands, which were like Maker's Mark, who went, no, we're expensive, screw you. And then following on the heels of that came, you know, Baker's, Booker's, Knob, and all of these like, oh, people want to spend real money on quality whiskey? Yeah. Well, it was too late for IW Harper. They had really focused all their energy into Japan, where they were really known as a luxury brand. And that's why the bottles looked so fancy. Because I don't know if you remember, but like in Japan, the packaging and the high quality and ornateness, that's a big deal. Uh, it's, look at all the Japanese whiskeys. Well, not all of them, but the real ones. And then by 90, they were totally withdrawn from the U.S. market. And so in 1990, when I started, I was in high school, actually like junior high, I think. And so they were already gone from the U.S. market by that point. Uh, and it wasn't until 2015 that Diageo brought them back in to American products. And that's about when I discovered I.W. Harper 15. And then they started releasing the, the budget level I.W. Harper. And this is their newest one, which is an I.W. Harper Cabernet. And this is them trying to like re-break into the luxury bourbon market after spending all their energies in Japan for almost a hundred years. Um, how's that, for, is that enough whiskey nerd stuff for you? <laughs> it smells like Simple Kentucky bourbon. I'm not smelling the Cabernet, and I think these are California Cabernet casks, but the, the Cabernet is not immediately apparent in the nose. If you get past the corn dust, there is a soft sweetness. There's not a lot of spice. If I remember correctly, this is kind of a low rye percentage, relatively speaking. Not low, I guess. It's, it's like crawling in on 20, like 18 maybe. But it, it's a, it's not super spicy in the nose. It's just... Soft grain, dust, sweetness. I, f I mean, if there is a Cabernet nose, I feel like it's just sort of like putting a blanket over all of the tannins and the and things like that. Mm, okay, there it is. So what it seems to do is just take all of the corn and, and rye and just sort of like add this soft, sweet, layer over top of it, like tamping everything down and softening everything. So, I mean, I think that falls in line with the sort of like softened, approachable bourbon, but not a lot of complexity, just gentle and approachable, uh, which, you know, I guess could match the uh, fanciness of the bottle and label. Mm, there's a slight clinginess that I'm going to attribute to the sweetness that I'm going to attribute to the Cabernet cask. But then there's a weird spiciness at the back end that makes it taste like almost flat soda. Like you ever have an almost flat soda where it's pretty watered down and you take a big gulp of it and it's not until the very end that it gets a little bit sparkly still? <laughs> it's, a, it's sort of like that. It's a weird experience. Okay, so filtering through your marketing. This is, there's a reason that I'm talking about this, but I'll, I'll get to it. So once you're at Wizard Academy and you've made it through the weird name and you've made it through not having heard about us because we don't market except someone told you to come and you've made it through the pricing, we make it really, really easy once we've found our people to return to us and be a part of the community. So if you found us, then you're now alum and every single class you ever take is 50% off now. And... Uh, we allow spouses and partners to attend marketing classes for free. So if you paid for a seat, you can bring your spouse or partner. Why? Because the odds that you do the things we're teaching you go way up if the most important person in your life is also in the room. And we let you send people here and grant them your alumni discount if you really believe 
that they're our kind of people, but the price is prohibitive. You want to knock that down for them. You can sort of grant them your alumni. We have all of these ways to work around high pricing just as long as you've made it through all the important filters of are you our kind of people, and when you get here, are you going to feel like you finally came home? I tell you this because it's easy to do this for yourself, and I should say easy. It's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. If you don't have the money for mass marketing and you don't have the ability to filter out people at your events and say you're doing tastings at bars or you're or you have a company and you want to and it's important to you to make sure that the kind of people who approach you are sort of already self-filtered to be the high potential for your client or the kind of people who really love what you do. The way that you do that if you can't do applications, which most of the world can't do, is through your messaging and through your systems. And so that everything people have to jump through to get to you increases the odds that you're, that they're your kind of people. And that's one of the things we teach at Wizard Academy. So let's hope that the odds of people finding you are always in your favor. <laughs> and I'm really glad you're here. Cheers. Cheers.